What's going on, you guys? We're going to talk about a full dating guide for busy men ages 35 to 45. Okay, so if you're not between this age bracket, I mean, maybe we could go a little bit younger than 35, a little bit older than 45. But I mean, if you're like, you know, in your 50s and 60s or you're in your 20s, um, maybe even like about to turn 30, I have a separate video for that. Um, I have a separate video for the older age category too. So I'm going to be covering all of these individually, but this is for those guys who are busy. They feel like they're working all the time and women is kind of like the last piece of the puzzle. Okay. They figured out a lot of stuff in life, but the last piece of the puzzle that they're missing from their lives is either a woman or being able to date the women that they actually want to date. Okay. And if that's you, then this video is perfect for you because there's a lot of benefits to being a guy in the, between the ages of 35 to 45. If you're a busy professional between that age bracket, dude, like this is some of the most attractive periods of your life in terms of being attractive to women. But the problem is most guys, because of the negative things that I'm going to be talking about in this video, is they don't get to experience that. They actually don't get the benefits of it because they're not meeting the women that they want to meet. Or if they do meet them, they mess it up. Okay. So what we're going to talk about is how to solve those problems, among other problems as well, too. And what really makes being a guy 35 to 45, what really makes him successful? I'm going to give real examples of guys that I've worked with um, that made it work. And I'm also going to talk about my own story. So we're going to cover this in this video today. It's going to be a longer one, but that's why I'm here. I didn't make it all flashy. I just made the PowerPoint so uh, we can just give you the guys the information that you need. OK. All right. So let's make this circle a little smaller. What is this going to cover? It's going to cover my story, getting older and dating. It's going to cover balancing a busy work schedule and changing attitudes and friendships with dating. It's going to cover the challenges that are unique to 35 to 45 year olds. Okay. So there are challenges that are unique. Okay. You're not the same as you were when you were 22 years old. You're older, you're more experienced, you know, or more experienced in certain areas. Okay. You don't think the same way you do when you're a 22 year old guy. Okay. The world isn't the same for you. All right. How to solve these challenges and get yourself options with dating women. We're also going to talk about how to date younger women. Okay. This is usually the time where men start to look at the younger women and find them more attractive. Okay. Um, is that possible? Is that a good thing to do? You know, we'll talk about that. Right. And even if you want to date women around your age, this is going to be a perfect thing for you. Okay. I think there are a lot of benefits to dating women your age too, but if you like the younger women, hell yeah, man. There's plenty of guys who I've coached who are dating women who are half their age and doing very well with them, okay? Um, so we have examples of men who I've personally seen overcome these challenges. I'm going to go over examples of those guys, um, and uh, so you can learn from them okay? because these are real guys that I worked with um, in the last couple of years that have a dating life that you know most men would be envious of, okay? All right. Here we go. We're going to go to the next slide. So why should you listen to me? So if you're new here, maybe you've seen my videos before. I'm sure most of you probably have. Um, I've had immense challenges with women growing up. Okay. So I've coached hundreds of older men to fulfilling relationships, abundance and marriage. I say older men, dude, 35 to 45 is not old. Okay. It's not old at all. I mean, that's pretty much the age bracket that I'm in. Okay. I'm not quite 35 yet, but I'm almost 35. Um, and I just think things are getting better and better. Okay. The only thing that changes is like your hangovers last longer. You know, you, you, your body hurts in different ways, uh, a little bit more, but if you do the right kind of calisthenics and yoga and movement training, your body can still stay very, very healthy. You know, I've seen guys maintain their physical fitness, um, and get even faster and, and more athletic as they get older, you know, like age is really just, it's, it's a state of mind. There are real things that happen. But as you get older, you get smarter and you learn how to handle those things. Okay. Um, and so we'll, we'll be getting into that as we talk about this more. Um, but one of the things that I'm great at is being able to break down social interaction to its fundamental components easily. Okay. So I'm a guy who comes from a physics background, a very technical background, and in that you really have to understand everything that's going on. And so I decided to apply that to social interaction, which was something that I was like more interested in, something that I really cared about more. And I wanted to do better at, you know, when you're in the physics department, there's not that many, many women. So I wanted to do better there. So I applied the same kind of like mentality I had to um, what I was learning in like, you know, quantum physics and stuff like that. Okay. Breaking things down to their fundamental components. All right. So let's talk about, uh, this is me bragging a little bit. <laughs> Here are just some photos from you know, women I've dated, you know, people, um, this is my current girlfriend over here. 
so what we want to do is um, this isn't so much to just say, oh, I'm the man. Look at me. Dude, there's plenty of stuff that I struggle with. I still get approach anxiety. I still get a lot of things. There are plenty of interactions that like you'll see me mess up at. It's just I've done different things repeatedly that other guys haven't done. Okay. And that's what's made me have this kind of success. All right. And a lot of these women, by the way, um, I've met as I've been older, some of them are in their twenties, believe it or not. Some of them are actually in their thirties. You know, you want to find a woman who's going to take care of herself. All right. This is me 90% of the time though. Okay. So if you're a busy professional and this looks familiar to you where you're in front of your desk and you're working all the time, that's where I am right now. You know, I'm here. I'm not anywhere else. Right. Uh, so most of the time I'm working and most of the time I'm figuring these things out. And so I have a short period of time for me to be able to do these things that I'm showing you, but they work. And so I don't want you to have to be going out hours on end, trying to figure these different things out. I want to give you a plan that has worked for my previous clients and could possibly work for you too. Okay. Good chance it'll work for you. Okay. So let's move on to the next slide. So let's talk about some of the challenges that I've been through. So uh, if you can relate to any of these things, you guys, okay. Dealing with extreme loneliness and depression, dude, I have been through so many bouts of loneliness and depression. I can't even tell you. I mean, I live in a, I live in a mansion right now full of uh, like four other guys that are here. They're all entrepreneurs. They're all badass guys in their 30s, uh, late 30s. And I'm learning a lot from them. They work in kind of different areas like real estate and stuff. But the main reason why I did this is because I don't like being alone, dude. You know, I have a girlfriend right now. But for me to be in a house full of people, like that's just, that that's what makes me feel good. And I didn't want to be in a house full of people with just anyone. I wanted to be in a house full of people with people that were actually growing a business. Okay. Uh, and my girlfriend pretty much lives here too. So, um, I was working long hours each week on business that takes up most of my time and energy. Yeah, dude, I'm working like 60 to 80 hours a week. Okay. It really depends on the week, but I do work through it. So large bouts of chronic isolation and loneliness, but you didn't hear that before you're hearing it again. Um, not having a likable personality. <laughs> yeah. I mean, you know, I wouldn't say I'm a charming guy. I'd say I'm a charismatic guy. Charisma and charm are two different things though. Charisma is like, you know, you can inspire people and you can make them feel a certain way and get them to, you know, motivate them to do something. That's what I do on this channel all the time. But charm is like, everybody likes you. Not everybody I talk to likes me and I've had to accept that. And I think most people, once they learn to accept what their faults and um, their positive things are, then, you know, they can do better at it. And that's one thing that you get better at as you get older. Around the 35 to 45, that's really where you start to accept certain things about yourself that you can change. And if you're smart, then you're motivated to change the things that you feel like you can or you want to, okay? I've also dealt with chronic health issues, okay, especially my digestive system. So I've had a lot of injuries from sports. Currently, I'm dealing with an injury in my bicep. I've had a broken rib from jujitsu that kept me out for about a year and a half. The worst thing, though, the hardest time in my life was probably my stomach issues. You know, I had about a year where, um, yeah, I wasn't really going out at all. You know, I was barely posting on my YouTube channel. Um, and I was having a really rough time. It was right around the end of the pandemic. Um, and yeah, that was a tough one for me to get through. Okay. So if you're going through health problems or you've had health problems in the past, dude, I get it. Sometimes there's just things that, you know, where you can't even leave the house. Right. Um, so I've been there. Okay. And the one thing that I had was a lack of understanding of people, social skills, and social norms. You know, when I was growing up, I really didn't understand why people did the things that they did. I played a lot of soccer. I did a lot of sports. I did a lot of physics and math and stuff like that. All that made sense. But people, ooh, not so much, man. Not so much. They confused me. And I just felt like people didn't like me for some reason. So it took me longer to understand social interaction until I could break it down and explain it to somebody. I didn't really feel like I got it. Okay. Watching all my friends get success when I didn't. Okay. Being broke most of my life. That's another thing too. I didn't have a whole lot of money for most of my life. I have a bit of money now, um, but definitely not back then. 
Okay. So now we've talked about the challenges that I've been through. Let's talk about the benefits of being a 35 to 45 year old guy. I'm going to take my laptop up a little bit. So, uh, okay. Get that away. Thank you. All right. Perfect. So there's a lot of benefits to being a guy from 35 to 45 years old. The first thing is that your peak sexual market value for dating women is at the highest it's ever going to be. Okay. It's proven. You're going to get the most amount of matches on dating apps at age 38 to 40. And I know this because I have clients who are at that age range and they match with tons of women in their age bracket and women who are younger than them. Okay. So for instance, if you're, if, if a woman was not attracted to you and this has happened in my life too, um, let's say right out of college, you know, both are 23 years old. She wants nothing to do with you right around the late twenties. That's when she's starting to feel like, Hmm, you know, the guys that I was turning my nose up at, maybe they're not so bad, but she doesn't want to accept it yet. By the time she's hitting her thirties, she's full on seeing them as great candidates. By the time she hits, you know, 40, those guys would seem like a gift from above if she could get with them. Okay. Uh, not every single person, by the way, but a lot of women, this is the case. So it kind of flips. Whereas before you're 23, you're like, oh my God, what would I do? What would I give to be able to get this woman attracted to me 20 years later? If they're still single, it can be the opposite. Okay. So, you know, you are going to be more attractive as you get older, but you have to be able to take care of yourself. If you're watching this and you've gained 60 pounds of fat, it doesn't apply to you. Okay. Lose that fat, lose that fat, you know, cure some of the things that are making you look unhealthy. Um, I know sometimes people lose hair. You, you can get away with hair loss. Um, but you don't want to have uh, baggage on yourself. Okay. So make sure that you're in relatively good shape. Um, and most of that stuff solves itself. Okay. Have, have be in shape and be making money too. If you're not making money, you know, these things don't apply. If you're broke, it's not, it's not cool to be broke when you're 35 or 45. All right. So, um, yeah, we got to improve that. So you have increased emotional intelligence, increased maturity and self-assuredness. This is all applicable to your confidence. Okay. Emotional intelligence means that you don't get super frustrated and angry about things. Dude, I used to get so mad about the dumbest stuff when I was younger. I don't really get mad about that stuff anymore. All right. I know myself a lot better, right? I act more confident when I walk up to a woman and when she rejects me, I care way less than I did when I was in my twenties, <laughs> way less. <laughs> right. So, um, yeah, those are all great things. Now men can be more attractive as they age and appealing to younger women as well. But again, you know, physical attraction definitely is going to play a role there. Um, yeah, if you have money that can kind of balance things out, but you have to have a baseline level of physical attraction. Okay. So we got to be in shape. And then we also have to, the way we dress also matters too, but you know, it's mostly a case of, of being in good physical shape. Okay. Um, grooming as well. will will help with that. All right. So for most guys, I'd say they're the most attractive at 38. All right. Challenges that 35 to 45 year old men face. All right. Don't know where or how to meet women. They are attracted to worried. They might seem creepy talking to younger women, loneliness, isolation, resentful, and bitterness. These are things that I dealt with when I was younger. Okay. So the biggest one I'm going to say right off the bat, before I get into the other ones is don't know where or how to meet women they are attracted to. Okay. So if you're watching this and chances are, you're probably a guy who works a lot and you're probably a guy who, when the weekend rolls around, when it's time to meet up with women, your options are pretty freaking limited. You know, you don't know where to meet up with women. You don't have the same spots that you did when you were younger, you know, you're not going out to bars. You're not meeting women in class. You're not seeing those like house parties that people are hitting you up and inviting you to anymore. Okay. Those aren't happening. All right. And sometimes your friends, you know, people, you know, they start drifting away. You don't have the same social network you had. Okay. You know, and they start getting hooked up and married and kind of doing their own thing. And they start isolating themselves and they start getting away from everybody. And then you're kind of like left by yourself and you're like, well, you know, 
I don't know what to do at this point. I don't know where to go. Like none of the places I used to go are even remotely appealing to me. And I don't think it would even work if I went there. So where do I go now? Right. So that's a big problem. Probably the, one of the bigger problems that men deal with. Also, I deal with a lot of guys who like don't know what to say and do still. Um, sometimes the game changes a little bit for men at that age. So we'll talk a little bit about that in this video as well, too. Um, but mostly it's going to be for your particular situation, where to go and what to do. All right. Now, there's also going to be baggage from a particularly bad breakup, divorce or relationship experience. OK, by 35, you know, you've either not had any luck with women and you've experienced just a train of rejections that's made you kind of bitter, that's made you resentful, that's made you like not really want to even interact with women, you know, because they haven't been nice to your whole life, right? Or maybe you've had good experiences, but they've ended badly. Dude, I've talked to so many guys who have been through a horrible, horrible divorce, been through a horrible, horrible breakup that like really wrecked them. It took them years to get over that, okay? And they still have trouble trusting women because they are not able to do so. I mean, when it comes out from such a bad situation like that where you truly love somebody and it ends that way, dude, it's super hard. And I've freaking been there, man, okay? Another thing is that your metabolism isn't as high. So men tend to get out of shape. Yeah, that's what I was saying before. Okay, you know, when you're in your 20s, you can drink, eat like crap, and, you know, your body stays fine. But, you know, um, oh, yeah, also, too, your hangovers aren't nearly as bad. You can wake up and do work the next day. When you're in your 35 to 45 year old range, you cannot. That's a two day job recovering from those kinds of uh, situations. All right. And then the other thing, too, is that most of their time is spent working long hours. OK, so men in this age bracket tend to become more selective for friends and partners. So on top of that, you're not meeting a lot of people, but the people you do meet, most of them you don't even have time for. Most of them you're just like, eh, I don't know, like, you know, it's going to take too long for us to develop, you know, some common interests or whatever. You're going to have to force it too much. It just kind of feels like a waste of time. And so you're more selective about who you hang out with. All right. And then the last thing, too, especially with men who are successful, they can get taken, taken advantage of financially. OK. If you don't know how to use your money correctly or around women, there are women out there who target men who are successful and they know how to drain that sucker for everything he's worth. OK. The business that you got into that taught you how to make money, their business is getting men and getting them to put the money from his pocket into hers. Okay. And if you're not good with women, you will get taken advantage of by these women. All right. Cool. So what are the solutions? All right. Number one is to actually get out there and make an effort. Find places and activities to meet women you are attracted to. We will cover them. So yes, we are going to talk about what things to do to meet the kinds of women that you like. All right. Don't think that just because you're 35 to 45, stop calling yourself old. Stop calling yourself someone who, oh, I'm beyond that. I'm too old for that. Too old for what? Yes, there are certain things that you're not going to be successful at, so you shouldn't do those. But using that mentality and being low energy, you know, it's not good for your career. It's not good for business. It's not good for living a good life. You're 35 to 40. You have the you have the next 50 years to be tired and, you know, sit down and relax. Don't squander this time. When you're 60 and 70, you're going to be thinking that 35 to 45 was so young, right? All right. You got to build a social network of people you enjoy and grow with, okay? These are people that you're actually going to be friends with. Yes, it is possible to make friends between the ages of 35 to 45, I've done it. A bunch of my clients have done it. You can do it too, but not just with anyone, with actual people that are going to be good for you. My status, or sorry, my standard for a friend these days, way higher than it was for me in my 20s. Way higher. But I meet those people. I know where to meet those people. I know how to meet those people, and I've done it. That's why I've built a house full of people of those kinds so we can grow together. It's way more fun when you're growing together with people than it is growing by yourself. I mean, who are you going to show off your stuff to? Who are you going to have fun with? Right? 
So be able to meet women online through different platforms, women that meet your criteria, okay? Oh, and I skipped one. I skipped two, actually. Enjoy your life and be able to have fun. If you're working all the time, I'd say that most guys don't know how to have fun. They spend all of their time working, and then they're like, oh, time for fun now, and they just kind of stand there. They can't smile. They can't enjoy what's going on around them. Sometimes I'll bring them to a party full of women, and they'll still have this kind of like scowl over their face. I'm like, dude, look happy. You're, this is where you want to be, right? Anyway, big problem. Okay. Using your money to effectively date. Don't make dating be a financial burden. Okay. So I see this happen all the time with guys who are successful as well. If you're a busy guy between 35 to 45, you just kind of see dating as like, oh, I got to take her out to these nice dinners. I got to plan these dates. You know, I don't want to look cheap. So I, you know, uh, I'm going to be doing all of this stuff. And it seems like it's going to cost money. You know, it seems like it's just going to be a net drain on your bank account. There is a way to date where you don't have to do that. And one of those ways is inviting women to do the work things that you're doing. So if you're going to a networking event, if you're going to a meeting, you can actually invite women on that if it's a dinner thing. Okay. But not all the time. It's, you, but using it to do it right will actually make for a better date than if you spent $300 on a dinner, didn't get laid, didn't get a text back, you know, but she got to eat for free. There's way, way better ways to date than that. Okay. And then know how to approach women, especially younger women the right way. Okay. Yeah. Look, just because you're 35 to 45 doesn't mean you never approach. Now I'm going to say there are certain areas where I would probably rarely approach, you know, a loud, a loud club where they're serving plastic cups and it, you know, that would not be a place that I would recommend that you go me personally. Um, didn't even like that when I was in my twenties. Uh, but yeah, you can absolutely approach women. I just did an interview with a woman who was 35, gorgeous woman. She's complaining how guys never walk up and approach her. Now, some of you might be saying, oh yeah, well that's cause she's 35 and she's over the hill. Wait till you see this woman. Okay. So knowing how to approach women the right way. Okay. That's important as well too. Now let's talk about the details of these solutions. I'm going to be going eat. So these solutions up here, we're going to be going in detail into each of them. So we're going to talk about finding the places and activities to meet women you are attracted to. Okay. So let's talk about that first. So when we talk about actually getting out there and making an effort, what am I talking about? Well, the places that I'm not talking about are loud clubs full of drinking and plastic cups, randomly going to shopping malls to pick up women. No, 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 no. We don't need to do that stuff. Okay. You're a guy who's between 35 to 45. There are better places. Same thing with colleges. Sorry. Excuse me. Same thing with colleges, high schools, public transportation, all that stuff. I don't think I need to tell you that those are not going to be great places to go, but Hey, just in case you didn't know, there you go. Late night party type events. So I included some photos. This is a photo of sixth street, a uh, bunch of crowded people like moving around. Dude, between the ages of 35 to 45, I don't think you're going to be meeting a quality girl there. And here's like a loud nightclub. Kind of looks like it's full of dudes. Probably wouldn't go there either. Okay. All right. Let's talk about some places that work. So these are some examples. Now, I don't know your lifestyle. I don't know what it is that you're doing. I would need to talk to you to figure it out. Okay. But I know that there are places in my city and there are places in most major cities that are great for a guy who's 35 to 45, okay? Look at the top photo. This one right here. This is a run club that I've been to. I've been to several run clubs in Austin and they have extremely attractive women. I mean, look at this. There's more women than men in this one, okay? Now, if you wanna find hot, in shape women and you don't want to have to go out and get drunk and approach them at a bar, which is you know, statistically going to be harder anyway. Something like a run club would be extremely beneficial to you. Go regularly, make friends there, work the long game. A lot of times these places start out at a park and they end at a bar. Okay. And these are people you all went on a run with. Everyone's full of endorphins. It's a great place to talk to somebody. Okay. I have so many videos on how to meet people at run clubs. All right. Now, we want to meet women during the daytime, okay? Late night parties for people who 35 to 45 who are busy. 
You can do them sometimes if you want, but I would say in general, stay away from them. Dude, I cannot party super late anymore. I got to run a business. I got too many clients. I got things going on. It takes me way too long to recover. I will do a late night party, you know, very, very infrequently. Okay. Don't drink nearly as much as I used to. 99.9% .9 of the time I'm sober. Even when I go out, most of the time I'm pretty sober. Um, yeah. Uh, lounges, rooftops, and hotel bars are typically the places that I like to stick to. Um, they're a little classier. The clientele there are a little bit more relaxed. It doesn't have blaring music where I can't hear myself think. Um, and women are very receptive to approaching. Okay, so there are plenty of places in Austin that pertain to that, but in every single city, they got them as well, too. These tend to skew a little bit older, but that doesn't mean that young women don't go there. I find that a lot of women who go there that are young are very open to and sometimes looking for a guy who's a bit older than their age bracket, okay? Another area that works are networking events. Okay, so around your expertise would be good. So I've coached like a lot of real estate agents, there's a lot of real estate conferences. There's a lot of real estate events around where there's tons of attractive women. I mean, you know, the amount of the amount of hot women in real estate like, is, is, is incalculable. Okay. Especially women that are trying to be good in real estate. So if you're good at that, then it really helps. I, I've coached dentists. I've coached uh, lawyers. All of them have conferences and places that people go to perfect places to meet women. Okay. And they're looking for guys like yourself. So for instance, if you're a lawyer and you go out to a random bar, you don't have very much status. Your status is the same as everybody else's. But at a conference, if you're a lawyer, then you have a massive amount of a status gain, okay? People see that as the important thing. So know where your niche is, know where you're gonna look good in, and make sure you spend time doing those things, okay? There's also social clubs you can join. There's online or social media dating, okay? So you can reach out to women online. A lot of the examples of the guys who I've coached in the past, they have met people through online ways. Um, it's worked very effectively for them, okay? So we can talk about how to do that. But uh, for me, the most important way is uh, meeting women in real life, and you will use that to supplement it, okay? All right. Art, ga art exhibit galleries. Yeah, there's plenty of events going on around there. Charity events and fashion shows. These are some of my favorite places. They have extremely gorgeous women. The fact that you're even at one of these events, you get a bit of a status boost because they know that, oh, he knew about this event. Oh, he's uh, he must be working. You know, They might think you either work in the industry if it's like a charity event, like you donated or something like that, or you know, you're just a good person for being there. Okay, Fashion shows is just great for meeting really attractive women. Um, I love them. Okay. Now these are just examples. These are places that my clients have met attractive women through and been successful in, in this age bracket. Okay. This does not mean that these are going to be the right ones for you. Again, we would have to talk about your situation. Where are you living? What do you do? What does your week look like? What are your interests? All of those things will factor into what you choose. I'd rather you pick something that you're good at, that you like, than something that you hate which just contains a lot of women. Like if you absolutely hate art and you know you think it's you know the, the most ridiculous thing ever, don't go to art exhibits. Yeah, sure, there's tons of hot women there. Don't go there. Same thing with yoga. A lot of guys will just take yoga to hit on women and it never works, okay? The only time it works is if you're already into yoga and you really like it, okay? And then you stick with it for a while. That's how you do it, all right? Now, this photo up here was from a real, uh, real club that I went to. And this photo down here is just like a generic rooftop bar, but these are generally what they look like. And, um, so those are the ones that I'd rather go to. Again, I'd rather go during the daytime than staying up late at night. All right. The next thing solution that we talked about for 35 to 45 year olds, especially if you're busy is building a social network. Dude, building a social network can be so tough when you get older. So around this age is when men start to really lose friends. Friends move, they get married, they have kids. Um, less than 27% of men have six close friends. And this is above the age of 25. I, I forgot to, to mention that, okay? Um, less than 27% of men have six, more than six close friends, all right? We are more focused 
um, more focus is placed on work and we don't have as much free time. So that's kind of where society pushes us, you know, because we're not in school anymore. We can't form new connections. It kind of pushes us. Oh, look at you. Now you have to like go get a job, go start a family, go do that. And then it kind of pushes us in that direction. Okay. Um, and it really hurts a lot of men in terms of being social and in terms of meeting new people. So if you find yourself single between the ages of 35 to 45, it can be really hard to meet people because you don't have this social network. You don't have the network that you did when you were in school. You know, in school, you're almost trying to avoid people. But when you get older, it's like, Jesus, you know, I don't have anybody in my life. Right. And the men who work from home have it the worst. Take it from a guy who does work from home. I have to learn how to build all this stuff up myself. And if you're a guy who works from home, um, who's suffering from any of these things. Yeah, man. You know, that's why I have a business is to help guys like you out because it can be tough, dude, when you don't have even have coworkers or people to bounce ideas off of. You just wake up and you work from home and then, you know, you finish your day and you're in the exact same place. Okay. You know, my whole life I worked to get out of nine to five. And then when I got out of nine to five, I found there was new problems, right? Gotcha. The other thing too, is that women have a much easier time forming friendships. Like look at women, they'll go to the bathroom and they'll make like two friends. You know, my girlfriend can walk on the street, talk to like five people, four of them will be her friend. If I do that, how many of those five do you think are going to be my friend? Probably a lot less. Okay. So yeah, women have an easier time doing this, but that doesn't mean that you should not do it. Okay, so the question becomes, how do you form a social network? We've talked about uh, the challenges here, but the easiest thing that you can start doing right now, you guys, is you have people in your life currently. Reach out to them, but be selective. You know, if you have a friend who's an alcoholic who's always asking you for money, maybe that's not the guy to be connecting with. But if you have a guy who's starting a business and you guys just kind of drifted apart and you don't know why, Dude, send him a message. Ask him how he's doing. I don't care what your current situation is. Make an effort with people. I have regular phone calls with my friends. And, you know, I try and stick around with people who are doing well. But I also talk to people who are not doing well. Right? And for me to have people in my life, that makes me feel good. That makes me feel good about myself. It makes me feel less lonely, more confident. That way, if I need to approach women, I'm much more confident to be able to do that. If you have nobody... The idea of approaching a woman, like you really base a lot of your self-worth on how that interaction is going to go. You want to base as little self-worth as possible on how your interactions go with women. And that makes you much, much more attractive. And the way to do that is by connecting with the people around you. I guarantee you already have people that you can connect with in your own life. So start there. That is only the starting point. I don't want you to stay there. I want you to get better friends. Okay, so I want you to find activities and things that you enjoy doing that you can meet people through. Ideally, these are in mixed groups, um, so you can also meet women there too. For me, I met a lot of awesome dudes through jujitsu, um, and I find that the guys who take it seriously, who actually you know take the time to learn the moves and get better and are focused, they tend to be more successful guys, um, and I have a great time with them. So, you know, I've met guys who are like. You know, one of the one of the early investors in Tesla. I've met guys who like freaking Lex Friedman goes to the same uh, BJJ gym as I do. So yeah, there's a lot of guys who I see walking around that are very successful people who I may meet at meet at the gym there. So there could be something like that for you. Okay, make sure that you have activities that you're doing. You know, that time that you're spending at the gym that you're just having your headphones in, working out, where you call it like your quiet place. That could be time if you were working out in a group where you could actually meet people who are going to make your life worth living. Okay. All right. So let's talk about how I built a social network. Okay. So I found like-minded men or at least men that don't spend all their time with their wives. All right. So if you're a guy between the ages of 35 to 45, you probably want to stay away from people who are, um, you know, heavily involved in their families. Okay. There are some people who can have families and still are able to hang out. Uh, but I'd say most people just kind of use it as an excuse to never go out again. You never see them. Okay. So yeah, sure. You have those friends, but just assume that those friends are on hold and you probably won't see them for another 20 years. Okay. So make new friends, make friends who don't have kids, make friends who are single. You might make friends that are a bit younger than you. It's okay to make friends who are younger. You're just going to not be as crazy as them. I wouldn't go too young. I wouldn't hang out with like a 
22 year old or something like that. 22 year olds are nuts. Um, meet men meet through common goals and activities. Okay. So for me, I've always met the men in my life, the friends who I've had by common goals. There's no other way to, we're not like, I think women can just go off and, oh my God, we're both Pisces and now we're friends. Men are not like that. Okay. We have to have a common goal we're working towards. Otherwise we'll never talk. So when I first started doing this, the common goal was I was going out every weekend and picking up chicks and I needed a wingman. So that was my common goal. And yes, you can use that common goal. So if that's, if that's the common goal that you have, why don't you just, um, hold on, let me, let me show you guys where you can join. Give me a second here. You can join my level up Academy. Go right here. It's perfect. Okay. So you just go to school.com slash level up Academy. And then, you know, you join the group, go down here. I think there's, I'm already a member of it, but if you join, there's 206 members here. There's going to be way more by the time this video, um, probably is like a few months old. Um, and you can meet guys through here. You can search in members, go to members. You can search, you can kind of see the guy's profile and everything. Um, but yeah, I would type it in here. There's going to be, I'm even coming out with a full map so you can see your city and you can see the other guys that are in the program there. So you can get a wingman there. These are all guys who are trying to level themselves up in terms of dating. Okay. So that's one method that you can use. All right, let's go back to the current slide. Okay. These, these four guys who I'm taking a photo with, they're all guys in their thirties and they're all worth a lot of money who are super cool guys to hang, hang out with. How did I meet them? I met them because I had a goal. My goal was I wanted to live in a mansion and I wanted to live with a bunch of badass entrepreneurs. So I posted about this and I reached out to all of them and we found a house that would take us. It took multiple houses. You know, we had people fall through, but we eventually found them. And now these are some of my best friends, right? You can create a social network as you get older. It is possible. Okay. But you know, it's usually through common goals. All right. So we've talked about forming social networks. We've talked about getting out there and meeting women. All right. Let's talk about dealing with pressure in this age bracket. So it's common for you to feel pressure to rush into settling down. Okay. This is one of the most common things that I see guys dealing with is, you know, they, they let society, they let their friends, they let everybody kind of pressure them into being someone who maybe they're not ready for, right? Maybe you're not ready to settle. Maybe you still have dreams and ambitions. You just haven't realized them yet. It's just taking you longer to do it. And that's okay. There are plenty of guys. I would say the guys who are successful are the guys who never give up. And we'll talk a little bit more about that as time goes on. But there's going to be a lot of pressures from society that tell you to do that. You know what? You haven't gotten women for a long time. Just, just settle. Just find someone who will take you. Just settle down with them. Right? Some people may, may shame or judge you for being a man that is alone. Don't let them. Okay. Most of the time, if it's a guy shaming you, he's jealous. If it's a woman shaming you, she's also jealous. Okay. Jealousy is a crazy thing. You know, I've lost friends due to jealousy. Right. But don't let that change who you are. Right. Right. Seeing your friends settling down and getting married all over social media, the subliminal messages that society is giving you, don't let that get to you, okay? The way to be successful is to stay consistent, do the things that we talk about here, and meet meet women and progress them, pro progress through with them, okay? Like I said, if you are able to meet the kinds of women that you want, if you are able to you know, create a life where you're doing things that you enjoy and you're doing them with other men or friends. It could, you could have female friends too. Female friends are great, by the way. Okay. Well, as you get older, if you have female friends, you know, it's the friend zone almost doesn't even exist. At that point, you're just like, hey, we should date, right? And they're like, yeah, sure, let's do it. <laughs> you know, it's not that hard. All right. But if you create this life, it can be the best time of your life. The problem is most guys have already settled down and it's too late for them and they can't do that. Okay. So I'm not saying that settling down and having a family is bad. I actually think that that's where most people should go. 
but from 35 to 45, you have the ability to start that, but also to enjoy your life before that happens. And if you start enjoying your life before that happens, I guarantee you, you'll get it. But if you're hating life, if you're succumbing to all the societal pressure and you're trying to rush into it, I guarantee you, you're going to pick someone who you don't really like. And then you can call me in 15 years, 10 years, five years after you're divorced when you're even lower. Okay. And I've gotten those guys. All right. I do want to mention this. It's not just societal pressure that affects men in this age bracket. Sometimes men have been beaten down by life. Look, dude, the life of a man is not easy. Many men I coach have been through tough times. Okay. They've been through repeated rejections and failures. You know, I myself have been rejected a lot. And when I think about them to this day, yeah, sometimes they're painful. I've had a lot of successes too to kind of balance them out, but it's, there's way more rejections. There's always more rejections than there are um, than there are successes. If you try hard at anything, that that's always the case. All right. Now, one thing that really bothers me, and what I think really bothers the people, is that in society, men tend to be maligned rather than um, people feel empathy towards. And it's because you know, like toxic masculinity, like we're seen as the problem. And so you go through your whole life being told that, oh, you know, you have an easier time, you know, things should be easier for you, blah, blah, blah. And you don't experience it repeatedly. Then you're just like, well, shit, you know, that was a lie. Society doesn't care about me. Society doesn't want me to be successful, you know, and it can take a toll on you, right? especially if you've been through failures and everyone by the time they've hit 35 or 45, you've experienced failures. Could be a failed business, could be a health problem that you're worried about. Could be a physical injury, could be a relationship that you failed at, right? Could be, um, you know, maybe you were fired from a job, right? All of these things, everybody experiences failure and it's how you deal with the failure afterwards. Are you going to let society beat you down to where you just give up and say, you know what, whatever society gives me, I'm fine with, or are you going to change your destiny? Because you absolutely have the ability to do this. But I'd say most 35 to 45 year olds, they've been beaten down by life so much that they give up. Okay. You're not in this life to have an easy go. You're not in this life to just be given things to you and have life be easy for you. You're in this life to make a difference. Every man has the ability to do so. And especially in this day and age, even though there are more complications, even though it can seem like everybody else is doing way better than you, you can absolutely do great as well too. All right? So don't let that happen. It is not over. So what dictates a man's success is what he does right now. Plenty of guys start crushing it in their 30s and 40s. The difference between the men who have given up and the men who keep growing shows drastically when you hit your 40s, okay? Ray Kroc didn't start McDonald's until he was in his 50s, right? Most of the guys who achieved their wealth did so in this time period, okay? It's because they didn't stop. Guys who peaked in their 20s, they make a bit of money. A lot of times they end up losing it. And by their 30s and 40s, they're just coasting and they can't be motivated to work anymore. Don't be that guy. Be the guy who makes a difference, okay, in your own life. Do this for yourself. Don't do this for me. Don't do this for anybody else. In my opinion, if you've suffered and you've experienced a lot of rejection, you deserve an attitude to get you the success that you've wanted, whether it's with women or whether it's in life. But especially with women, I see guys that just genuinely start giving up. And I don't want that to happen to you, okay? So we'll talk a little bit about some of the guys. I'll give you actual real examples now of men who have changed their life and how they did it, okay? And I'm going to start with this guy right here. I'm going to try not to use his name, <laughs> okay? All right, this guy. So we'll call him Bob. So when Bob started working with me, he was 44 years old. It was 45. I can't remember. 
44 or 45. He was dating a lot of different women around his age bracket that were giving him problems. Okay. He had been through a long relationship. I believe he had been married before. He had gone through a divorce. And, you know, he was dating a lot of women who were giving him tons of problems. And he wanted to have the dating life that he had when he was younger. But he was a little too scared to go after it and didn't know how to go after it. Okay. So what I did was I told him, hey, you have you have a dream that you want to go after and you're feeling pressure from society around you to act a certain way. I don't want you to listen to that pressure. I want you to listen to yourself and pick the thing that you want. And he decided that he wanted to date multiple women at the same time. And he's, I don't think he's doing that now, but um, it's something that he wanted to do. And so he started going around telling people he was poly. Now, did some women he was dating not want to date him anymore after he heard that? Yes, only like a couple. But the rest of them stayed. And by the end of my program, he went from dating women who were not that attractive, who were basically um, giving him a lot of problems and expectations, to then he had three women in their 20s living with him. And uh, yes, they were all in a sexual relationship. And now he's with one woman who's about, you know, half his age or whatever. And they've been together ever since. They've been together for years, right? This is a guy who, uh, you know, was busy. He was bouncing in between, um, I think he was bouncing between Puerto Rico and Texas a lot. Didn't have a whole time to be, a whole lot of time to be going out. He definitely wasn't going to bars and trying to pick up women randomly there. But what he did do was he was able to find time to organize events. He organized his own events with people that had the same interests as him. Um, he organized hikes. He organized walks. He organized fitness groups as well, too. He brought them all together. And that's how he met people. He did a terrific job doing that, right? And this is one of the things that I always tell guys is that you have the ability to do amazing things. People are waiting for someone to step up. And he stepped up. He stepped up. And he created the life that he wanted. And so I think he's a terrific example of what you can do at 45. Now, his goals might not be the same as yours. You might be watching this and thinking, oh, well, I'm, my goals aren't, uh, I'm not trying to date uh, multiple women at the same time who are young and, you know, <laughs> catering to my every sexual fantasy. No, I don't want that. All right. And that's fine. If you just want one woman still getting out there and doing the same things would work. You just need to put out what it is that you're looking for and own it, okay? Because he owned it, all right? Let's talk about uh, my other friend. We'll call him Dan. <laughs> Trying so hard to say his name. Um, so Dan worked with me for a couple of years, actually. When he first came to me, uh, his ex-girlfriend had broken up with him and blocked him off everything. So we got him unblocked. We got them talking again. And then eventually they started living with each other. Now, when I got them back together, I knew they were going to have problems. So a year later, they ended up breaking up and then he came back to me. And then we got him to start going out with women. We got him to start experiencing incredible abundance. That's actually me in the picture. We did some live training with him as well, too. That's actually me in the picture right here. And every single woman in the photo is a woman who he had a relationship with. <laughs> Believe it or not, we got them all in one picture. <laughs> and at the time, he was like, you know, being very, uh, being very open and honest. Like he wasn't looking, um, and he wasn't currently in a committed relationship with any of them. So it was fine. It was not a big deal at all. Okay. Um, so after he experienced abundance, now he's actually dating someone. Uh, hold on. Sorry about that. Uh, now he's actually dating somebody more seriously. This, this is his, uh, his ex-girlfriend. This is not his current girlfriend, but he's dating someone, um, uh, dating someone new and he's, uh, they're doing great together. Okay. So yes, it is possible for you to change things. I believe he's around 37 years old right now. And, um, yeah, he's doing great, but he went through a huge journey when he started working with me and, uh, experienced a lot of things that even guys in their twenties don't have the ability to experience. And now he's doing great with, uh, with one partner. So good for him. All right. Let's talk about this guy. This is a guy who I talked about last night. By the way, I have so many examples of guys, but the reason why I brought this one up again is because, you know, he was at a point in his life where he was feeling like, you know, just things weren't working out. He didn't understand. He was like, you know, I'm working hard. Um, 
feel like I'm not a bad looking guy, but I just can't find one that, you know, likes me back. And so what we did was we got him to, um, he started organizing, um, events and parties where that would include women that he actually found attractive and he tried to talk to all of them and most of them if not all of them didn't like him at first so then we worked on his ability to connect with people and he got one that he really liked and then he got a couple others but the first one that he met ended up being the grand slam you know they're married now right and it all started from him first having the mechanism to meet the women that he really liked. And then also too, learning how to connect with those women. And then third, learning how to not mess it up once he's got her, <laughs> right? So you develop yourself, you develop your environment, and that's the name of the game. The problem is most 35 to 45 year old men, their environment's all messed up and their programming has led them to also be someone who is not good with connecting with others. They can't show up in a confident way. They can't talk in a confident way. And so they never really learn how to do it. Okay. Now, um, there's other, a bunch of others. If you want, I can send you like a full uh, outline of, you know, all the guys who I've helped in this age bracket. But these are the guys who I felt like were just really good examples. And um, I have a lot of pictures with them too. So that always helps. All right. Let's go to the next slide. Now, you are probably one of the two people right now who have made it this far. Okay, so if you've made it this far in the presentation, this means this is obviously super relevant for you, okay, which is great. I want to provide as great of information as I can. Now, number one, you like the information and are just going to go on another YouTube video later and will maybe execute on this, okay? So you're like, yeah, this was nice. Maybe I'll do something about it. Maybe I won't. Um, and if that's you, great. I'll probably see you in another YouTube video. All right. Or your number two, you are tired of watching videos like this and not getting results and actually ready to make a change. Okay. So if you're number two, I want you to stay watching this video. All right. So if your answer is number one, thanks for coming. And hopefully I'll see you again in the next training. You can find additional free resources in wingman in your area by joining the free school group. Yeah. So there'll be a link to that in the description box below. I just kind of showed you how to join it already. Um, but basically if your answer was number two, those are the people that I want to focus on right now. All right. So if your answer was number two, then consider working with a professional like myself to really get these issues handled. So if you're a guy who's between the ages of 35 to 45, whether you're introverted, whether you're busy, um, 99% of all guys who spend time watching content online don't actually make a change. So if you're just a guy that's watching free content all the time, that's most people out there. Do most people get results that they actually are proud of with women and the dating life that they really enjoy? No, no, they don't. They get the average thing. These are the guys who are settling, okay? It's the men who are willing to make an actual commitment to get it done, actually get it done. That's why I have a coaching program. So if you are that person, then click the link in the description, fill out the application to schedule a free call with me or a member of my team, okay? You don't have to be 100% like I'm going to do this program because you don't really know what the program is. All right. But it's basically one that's going to allow me to see what it's going to take for you to meet the kinds of women that you want, to be attractive to the kinds of women that you want, to connect with them and to keep them for as long as you want. Okay. Now, everybody is different. Everybody has their own challenges. Everybody has their own situation. You have your own life experience. I've worked with all kinds of guys. I tried to give you three different people that were from very different walks of life. But if you resonate with any of the stuff that I was talking about in this presentation, that means that I get you in some way, shape or form. That means I understand where you're coming from. You know, I don't post things that I don't know anything about. All right. I post things that I'm familiar with dealing with and have dealt with hundreds, if not, you know, thousands of times. Right. And so if you schedule that call, we'll see if we can help you. Okay. So basically, um, yeah, free call with me. We'll be able to see what your blind spots are, what you need to do to get done, and whether we can get you there. Okay, it's pretty simple, you guys. All right. So I wanted to make this video specifically for the 35 to 45 year olds. So if you've made it this far and you're a number two, I highly recommend that you book a call with me because we'll talk about it there. Now, if you're still on the line, what I want to do is I want to talk about one more thing. And it's that as the 35 to 45 year old, there are some guys out there who don't know what to say and do. And that's stuff that I cover in, you know, 
some of my other videos too, but it's, you know, it's definitely, I'll tell you exactly what to do in the program. But for the most part, 35 to 45 year old men, I, I really want to harp on this, is this is potentially the best time of your life. You know, 35 to 45 year old men, it's not like being women. You know, women, they hit their attractiveness peak, you know, probably in their 20s. I think there are a lot of women that can that have gotten hotter and can and can stay very very hot, um, and you want to find those women. You know, those are the women that I want you to go for. Some of the women that I've uh, that I put in my photos, those are the kinds of women that do that. Um, but for the most part, there are a lot of men who don't live this. You know, the divide between the guys who are attractive and the guys who are not attractive becomes greater and greater as you get older, until it's like you can be almost unrecognizable to the people around you. And it really is the life that you create, the way you take care of yourself and your willingness to invest in yourself. You know, you are your most prized resource. All right. And if you don't invest in that, then it's going to atrophy. You're just not going to be as optimal as it could be. And so that's what I invite you guys to do. So thank you for watching you guys. Um, if you made it to the end. Yeah. Um, Pleasure to have you here. Book a call with me. We'll chat soon. Let me know in the comments section what you thought of this video. I'll see you later.